After a prolonged series of medical tests, my body was finally approved to take on episode two of Shane Dawson's latest series, which continues his habit of having a difficult to understand title structure by being called Haunted Theories with Shane Dawson. As though I'm supposed to somehow connect that as the second part to an episode called The Haunting of Shane Dawson. Listen, it doesn't matter how you wanna shuffle all those words around, these videos are not convincing me that there's a parasitic ghost attached to you. And baby, from the way that this series is pulling in substantially lower view counts than your previous ones, it's clear that there's nothing haunting you quite like those re-uploads on Daily Motion of your most racist song parodies from not that long ago. Throughout episode two, I was particularly struck with the ex extended periods of research and context that were presented solely through re-edited clips of pre-existing YouTube videos, basically constituting hours of research that Shane didn't have to interpret himself and then recite on camera in any way. Choosing instead to just cut together up to four minute long montages of smaller creators sharing their knowledge on the topic. Videos that he appears to have used without permission, without any on-screen credit or attribution, and only a link in the description box that somehow does not seem to have the same PR value as being listed as one of Oprah's favorite things. As someone who tries to fully understand the subtleties of fair use, this was very surprising. And I actually went through and pulled out all of the standalone content from other people that Shane used to move his story forward. And guess what? Those clips led to a 13 minute series of creators and news stations telling a very tight story of some of Colorado's haunted parks. When I watched the remaining 25 minutes of original footage from Shane and Chris, I got a boring and sort of sad look into what life is like in Colorado. While Shane confronts and then immediately overcomes any hesitation he has about profiting off of a racially based massacre. I swear, in order to get medically cleared for episode three, they're gonna have to put me in one of those big spinny things at NASA to make sure the extreme stress won't cause my heart valves to disintegrate. Anyway, viewer discretion is not advised because nothing you're about to see will be scary in any way in another supernatural Sheen Dawson installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello television viewers, my name is Nick. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into your favorite movies, TV movies, and content here on the web. And we rip it off the internet like a free YouTube downloader and break it up into little clips that we can look at and judge incrementally at how bad they are. Famously, I do this for Shane Dawson. And it took me a couple weeks before I could even dive into episode two because A, I was forewarned by many of my followers that it is boring and pointless. And B, because I just like to do other things sometimes. <laughs> However, I am glad that I'm continuing to cover this series and I did find there to be some very particular nuances with this one. So before we get into it, make sure you'll give this video a big thumbs up if you wanna see even more clip breakdowns just like this. But most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button. I upload two new videos every week, so turn on notifications. I've got merch and a Patreon. So obviously, we already knew that Shane Dawson is not someone who's precious about his runtime. He seems to extend his content well past the point of what is necessary by simply repeating phrases and adding transitions. Turns out, some of that is just his intro, because we get this little intro, which I find to be tedious and repetitive. Things follow me, Chris. The way you said that was so scary. <laughs> You've missed me. Baby, I've been right here, verbally dismantling your entire body of work for the last 15 months. So I somehow feel like that message is not directed at me. And again, you've already made this out of place, but not out of character, emotional plea to all of your fans in the last video. It's only gonna work so many times before you need to start just offering to Venmo people $5 to tweet something nice about you. And if you Venmo me $10, I will consider not turning up the contrast on your photo to an unflattering level 
level in this video thumbnail. But to be honest, I thought I was helping you. If people can't make out the details of your face in that tiny little picture, how will they know that you're the world famous Shane Dawson who misses them? And not just a sweaty, stressed out GameStop employee on the Black Friday after a new Xbox comes out. By the way, that is not a judgment on GameStop employees, okay? I found the man who I let sell me my Nintendo Switch to be one of my most methodical and entertaining lovers. He would occasionally give me one of those chocolate coins from Hanukkah. I felt like Super Mario. P.S. If anyone wants a completely unopened Nintendo Switch, I left it in the dumpster behind GameStop along with my balled up underwear that got completely ruined for reasons that I don't feel like mentioning this early in the video. How did we get here? How did we get here? It says that we're 20 seconds into Shane's video and I just talked about my balled up crusty underwear. We need so much help. So this episode starts with a little bit of performance, a little bit of drama to help sell the realism of the stakes that we have been wasting our time on. Okay. My arms hurt. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't see that when I was looking at it in the dark. Sorry. We have matching scratches. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't exactly call them matching since it seemed like Chris's came from a sharp corner and yours seems like it could be anything from eczema to generalized skin picking. We would really kind of need an evaluation from your primary care physician, but it doesn't seem like you go to the doctor. <laughs> Although I doubt any medical professional would agree with you and be like, no Shane, you're right. This is the work of an elbow scratching demon who snuck into your house in the night and gently abrased your elbow using a glass nail file. At this point, I'm convinced Shane thinks he's serving us found footage realness with the way he just walked into this scene rubbing his elbow, calling attention to this injury as though he were mauled by a hellhound in his dreams. That's eczema. Stop rubbing it and start taking some collagen peptides because your skin looks like it has the barrier strength of a used Kleenex. Shane trying to casually make this feel like a real thing. I mean like, ugh, ow, it just hurts. Matching scratches, good sign. It literally reminded me of the bad acting from that doctor in Paranormal normal activity who walked into one scene and then literally left right after. Yes, thank you so much for coming back. Oh, no problem, no problem. We, uh, we called Dr. Avery, he's like, it's gone. This is, this is overpowering. It's getting worse. I've, I've got to leave this room right now. No, 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 no. Are you serious? Yeah. I have the same exact reaction when I walk into someone's home and see a dated entryway. Dr. Demon here said, no, are you serious? Warm beige walls with wrought iron details? I came here to expel a demon, not order unlimited soup salad and breadsticks. So let's change it around. The majority of this episode takes place at Ryland's parents' house where Morgan is now living. This family does not excite me. I guess families don't excite me. I'm like, why are you even a family? <laughs> I don't know what that means. This family sucked. I'm bored. I'm just reading reviews and this person says, we'd seen an aspiration of a little girl along the bridge while we heard the drums. Okay, so I guess the bridge ghost is a little girl with the aspiration of becoming a drummer? Cause that's what you said. The only way to help her move on to the afterlife is to get her an appearance on Ellen like that viral nine year old. Oh, we can take the ghost to Universal Studios. She can ride her first roller coaster. Okay, wow. I start disassociating from Shane's content much earlier these days. It's fascinating how the brain will adapt over time to prevent absorbing any more trauma or boredom. For example, when I was a child, I took basketball lessons at the YMCA, but I still don't know how to play basketball. So Lord knows what I was doing out on that court. I would imagine it was a lot of step touches, like in the show choir. But either way, I was pretty much just making up stories in my head while trying to work up enough of a sweat that I felt worthy of the blue Powerade that my dad would get me from the vending machine. I love spending the time with you, dad, but I gotta be honest, if anyone put me on a basketball court today, I would literally look less foolish doing the opening cheer routine from Bring It On than actually trying to participate in the game. Including the part where I expose my breasts to the crowd. What, I'm not gonna force them to keep their eyes open. Although I can't be held responsible for my hypnotic areolas. That's mother nature, baby. That's all mother nature. Darwinism, evolution, everyone breed. <laughs> Whoa. In this next little bit, we have some performance from Shane who knows he has to express some amount of guilt over making videos about ghosts, which, you know, kind of innately involve the death of people. That's making a lot more sense because if you're saying that a 14 year old girl had passed and then people are seeing the figure of a girl and we're under the bridge and hear what sounds like a young girl screaming. It's really sad. It feels 
so weird about real stuff. Like it's it's fun when it's like oh, but like it's like weird, right? Yeah. Ryland is like, you mean bringing up a child who died in a traffic accident and implying that their ghost is out on a bridge screaming every night? Yeah, because in reality, this is one of the least weird or exploitative things Shane Dawson has done to get millions of views. I know since starting YouTube within six years, I saw a video on Shane's channel called something like Deaths Caught on Tape, which is definitely deleted from YouTube now because it showed graphic footage of people losing their lives, including the security feed of a person being sucked into a giant roller that I will never get out of my head. So that's why Shane's sudden sensitivity towards the topic of death feels a little hollow to me. I mean, it's like all of those videos were quietly deleted and probably only once they started to threaten the monetization status of his channel after a lot of major advertising policy changes on YouTube in 2017. It's not like he ever made that type of thing something he apologized for, even though I feel that's pretty gross. But in 2021, thanks to so much personal growth and change, it sounds like as long as Shane mentions his sadness about the real life tragedy behind the ghost that he's hunting and is then consciously recorded looking pensive and touching his face about it, then he's officially paid all the respect required to use someone's life as filler for his dumb, boring vlog. And the good part is pretty much all the work is done for him. Aside from downloading and remixing the news broadcasts and videos from smaller creators who tell the story for you, which makes up over one third of this episode. To me, there's a difference between using someone else's video as B-roll while you're talking over it it, and then just using their clips to actually give vital information and move your story forward for such a significant portion of the runtime. But we'll talk more about it in a second. Although in this episode, Shane does his time jumping thing, it's the least confusing out of every episode we've seen in my life of his work so far. Well, well now I here. touched it. I thought maybe we yeah, should mom, take it. You... What? Because Have I don't believe, I just don't one? believe in demons. No, mom, and... you take that thing. And, and you're done. Oh. Yeah, okay. a, a spirit is attached. All right, everybody, eat something nutritious because it appears we only have six hours left until fully grown Ryland and Morgan are scolding their mother for getting a demon spirit attached to herself. Ryland's mom is sitting there like, anyway, I thought it might be fun to come along on this little adventure since it is my birthday, but you know, I guess there's no surprise dinner component to this. We're just excited for Shane's return to YouTube and that's okay. I kid everybody. It does seem like Ryland has a very loving family, which is nice to see. Not all queer people can say that. Maybe we don't need to see them for the entire video, however, because some of these so-called haunted theories in the title are just uncomfortable conversations with someone's dad. And I already have plenty of those that I can scroll through anytime on my gay hookup apps. So this time jump brings us to Ryland's parents' house where we meet uh, Ryland's mother, Vicky, and his father, Bruce, both of whom, I feel like I get a pretty good sense of the family dynamic real quick. What we need to do is crush these TikTokers that are trashing all these school buildings. Huh? They're destroying bathrooms. And filming it? Yeah. It's a viral TikTok challenge damaging our schools. This soap dispenser is ripped off the wall. This toilet was covered in ketchup. It's national. I guess it's unifying to see that even liberal boomers get wound up by the 24 hour news cycle, spending all day distracted by shocking internet trends rather than things that matter to human lives, like our overcrowded borders or for-profit prison system. I'm not saying it doesn't suck that it was getting views on TikTok for kids to rip down their soap dispensers or have what looks like a really messy UTI over the toilet. But unfortunately, I remember this being a problem well before social media was even a thing. I'm talking about students sticking bloody panty liners to the bathroom wall, like a waking health class horror film. So I don't know, it just feels like all of a sudden Shane goes into this, again, about a minute of file footage, which is just, you know, stuff he ripped off of local news stations, talking about the trend where kids are ruining bathrooms on TikTok. It has nothing to do with the video, it has nothing to do with anything haunted. It's just something that Ryland's dad is mad about right now. It's like, Papa Bear, you need to settle down. Don't act like 
like you didn't commit some mild vandalism in the 60s with your rolled up jeans or whatever. Like, it's just like, you're just mad because it involves TikTok and that's something you don't understand. But anyway, back to the title of this video, which was Haunted Theories with Shane Dawson. Not intergenerational anger with Bruce, Ryland's dad. My point is, we're still talking about the bathroom thing from minute three to minute eight. I don't know why, but it's plenty of time to realize that Bruce might have that unfiltered dad sense of humor that really plays better in small doses. Kicked off three urinals off the walls today. So they're standing at the urinals and they're ripping off these sensors. There's 277 volts back there. So they I, don't, I don't wish harm on anybody, but I hope the little is taking a piss. You know where that electricity is gonna go? Right in this Oh yeah, and we're gonna find out real quick who it is. Nurse, nurse, what happened? I don't know, I was in science class and <laughs> just caught the fire. <laughs> this is why I moved here. <laughs> Family. All right, well keep them to your self because that one just weirded me out by talking about children's penises on fire. Also, he seems to know a lot about the school's urinal status and the wattage in the sensor. Does he work at the school? And in his free time, he must be that Facebook uncle from the family reunion who no one really wants to stand next to while they wait to get the bartender's attention. I'm sorry, that's not fair to this man who doesn't seem to fully understand the size of the platform that he's acting foolish on. Like, if you don't get out of my airspace with that size up t-shirt, buzzed hair, what is this? Well, that's not just any buzz cut basic dad, okay? He's also Shane's main researcher on this video that he's already started shooting. This is all about Cheese my Park and all these ghosts. What does it say? How's it going tonight? So I wanted to hop on here and tell you guys a quick little scary story. Spoiler alert, the story is actually not that quick, but it's also not told solely via A Haunting in Colorado, which is the YouTube channel of the creator who we just saw. This clip is actually just the start of Shane's previously mentioned four minute long section, where other than adding some scary music and transition, Shane did absolutely no work to tell the story to us of Colorado's Cheeseman Park. With most of the crucial information being presented, as I've mentioned, by YouTubers who have far fewer subscribers than he does. And at first you might think, oh, well, he put a link in the description and called them, quote, featured creators, which is obviously better than nothing. But when I actually checked those links in his description, I start to really question if it's a fair trade-off. Like, is it really fair for Shane to throw you that limited exposure in his video in exchange for him having to do any of his own research presenting this information? in an original or unique way. He said, instead, why don't I just edit together the six YouTube videos that I watched to learn about the topic and let that count for over one third of the runtime. Let alone the fact that this location, Cheeseman Park, has nothing to do with where they'll be going tonight. That becomes unclear too. In fact, I get confused because they mentioned so many different haunted locations that I forget where they're going on tonight's ghost hunt, which has been teased so thoroughly and yet apparently won't actually be happening until installment three. Ah, ah, ah. I looked into the analytics of the people Shane borrowed footage from, and it seems like some of them have gotten in the 600s or 800s of new subscribers since the videos have come out, which is great, but that's still less of an impact than one might expect from being in a video with 3 million views. Because the other creators have gotten like 100 or 200 new subscribers. You know, that's like the max is 800 so far. So how much more exposure could he have shared with these smaller creators if he had used his fellow YouTube footage in a professionally courteous way with an on-screen attribution or even a verbal mention of the creator and not just burying it deep in the description under featured. Like why not talk about how crucial these creators were to you creating this video that you're now profiting off of. If you're going to use four unbroken minutes of other people's research and storytelling to pad out your episode to the point where even Ryland's dad is just reading someone else's words off of a website, you'd think there might be time for Shane to jump on camera and be like, so I instantly became fascinated in the history of Cheeseman Park and I discovered these four creators who spoke all about it. They live closer to the area and spent a lot more time looking into it, so make sure to check those videos out too. And then perhaps you could also slap their channel name across the bottom of the screen so that the average user who's consuming YouTube on a television or is not going to stop the video 
knows how to look them up later. Like this is obvious stuff, but Shane is intentionally not doing it because I guess he's worried it would steal legitimacy away from this work that he's kind of featuring as his three part series as though he's some sort of creative genius. Mama, I know how to download other people's YouTube videos too. Jarvis Johnson, Hannah from Smoky Glow, and Kevin Perger at Defunct Land have all helped me so much in my YouTube career by like specifically saying nice things about me in their videos or online. And I hope to continue to do the same for other creators as my platform grows. Like I just worked with the Vintage Millennial, which was, it is such a cool podcast about movies you should check out. Anyway, mentioning the creators by name or giving them the respect of putting their channel name on the screen makes such a big difference in whether Shane is actually making it seem like he recommends and endorses another creator and wants us to go watch them or whether he's just using their work as free stock footage and talking heads, which kind of implies that his thing is bigger and more important, even though it's basically what they did just shuffled with other stuff. And I know that they're going to be Shane's stands who come for me saying, well, you just pull clips from his video and talk about them and you use B-roll and blah, blah, blah. Listen, I know I do that, but every clip that I pull has also been condensed down to its shortest portion so that it's just showing what I'm commenting on. And then I'm providing commentary. I'm not just saying, here's the story of some haunted theories and then playing Shane's video with some TV static sound effects in between. And when I do a movie, I'm not just showing you a condensed version of the movie or showing you other people reviewing the movie and saying that I agree with them. If you can't see the difference in how those are two different examples of using other people's original work, then you're trying not to see the difference. And worst of all is like, I watched the minutes of footage that did all the heavy lifting of Shane's storytelling. And yes, it was informative, but then I watched the 25 minutes of Shane's stuff and I was like, ugh, this is mercifully shorter. A 25 minute video as opposed to a 39 minute video. And even then it wasn't like I was watching anything good, but I mean, at least it was quick. So Shane is doing all of these not best practices stuff by, in my opinion, plagiarizing stealing and robbing these smaller creators of the, the attention they deserve. But he's also just doing it to make stuff longer so that he can justify splitting it into three parts. Like this is an eight hour afternoon that he's made into a three part series. Give me a break. On top of the burial ground. The park used to be a cemetery. Mount Prospect Cemetery until the city moved most of the bodies to new homes. Most of the bodies. 2,000 bodies remain buried there? Yes and they walk around there at night. The 2,000 bodies do not walk around there at night, Mr. Adams. There might be something up with Generation X that's making them all enter their gullible grandpa age a lot earlier than our actual grandparents did. I blame microplastics, which is a very bad sign for people of all ages. Since when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure our toothpaste had tiny plastic beads in them. And in my lifetime, I've swallowed up more Barbie shoes than the bottom of a toy box. So my brain is gonna turn mushy even faster. You can catch me in four years, hanging out my car window, screaming the URL to a Facebook post about aliens that I chose to believe in. Trust me, it's gonna get dark. So make sure to click subscribe to follow my journey. With YouTubers like Shane Dawson creating new content that's kind of garbage all the time, just waiting to be reviewed, it's crazy that you would even expect me to cook my own meals. Which is why I'm so grateful, as always, for the sponsor of today's video, Every Plate. I've been partnering with Every Plate for months, and it makes me so happy when I see that other people who watch my channel are trying and loving Every Plate as well, since it really is the only meal delivery service I've found that is affordable. In fact, every plate makes home cooking easier than ever while the food is just as delicious as takeout while costing far less. I'm talking like less than a cup of coffee per meal. Every plate provides you with full colored recipe cards and instructions. I'm always obsessed with the food styling and pre-portioned ingredients so I don't even have to measure. I'm just doing the fun visual stuff like a chopping. I can spend less time cooking and more time enjoying my meal. Check out these garlicky white sauce flatbreads that I prepared. 
prepared. Not everybody likes to spend the holiday season cooking, and Every Plate's Black Friday deal is the perfect time to give yourself a break. Try Every Plate for just $1.79 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering code NICKDURAMIA179. That's a $104 value, so thank you so much to Every Plate for sponsoring this video and keeping me fully nourished. Now let's get back to that video. Again, Shane is using just a massive amount of file footage to explain how Cheeseman Park has some bodies underneath it that didn't get moved after it was transferred from a cemetery. Again, this is not the park we'll be visiting. It's just another park in Colorado. Those who could afford began to transfer the bodies, but many could not. So the people left underneath the park are criminals and just bad people. So you're saying that every ghost in that park is extra evil? Then I'm glad we eat P.F. Chang's over their corpses on our lunch break. Oh wait, here's the full clip from that. The people left underneath the park are criminals and victims of suicide. Oof. Okay, I would like to officially walk back some of my comments on the morality of the Cheeseman Park corpses. I should have known to check my sources before I began mocking the dead with my Chinese food. Just to be safe, my new wish is for all of the Cheeseman bones slash souls to have a peaceful rest. And if I may address them directly, I hope you also enjoy the smell of my orange chicken and fried rice as much as I do. Someone on the internet told me that in life you were poor and sad, so you probably didn't didn't get to try that many foods before you died. Okay, someone please rescue me from this conversation so I can stop backpedaling to 2,000 dead people. Oh, I know just what to say. The Cheeseman Park corpses were a great girl. Hopefully she would have been a believer. I just want to point out that I think like most of America has bodies buried in places that we just don't know about. That's because we didn't always bury bodies in graveyards. So all of America is full of bodies, dead bodies everywhere. And there are no ghosts walking around my Baskin Robbins. So I question the validity. Shane, Ryland, Chris and friends all have to continue acting as though this beautiful white privilege park is somehow a subterranean tomb full of skulls. This flower is in full bloom and with the bloom of course comes the nasty smell described as rotting flesh. Oh yummy. We encourage you to go out into the gardens and look for a lovely spot to enjoy your meal. Poor Debbie from the Denver Botanical Center here is trying to drum up foot traffic for the new smart water garden to emphasize the importance of drought tolerant plants. But then Shane has to go and rip it off YouTube and make it part of his would-be horror movie that he's slapping together. Like you already use that skull footage. And I don't care if, like that a horror movie showed that. There's no risk of that actually happening at the Botanical Center when I'm eating my Whole Foods. Also, I don't know Debbie from the Denver Botanical Center's real name because Shane didn't link directly to the video he used, just the channel. So it's impossible to find. So I'm so sorry, Debbie. Your name was created because it created an alliteration with Denver Botanical Society. That's the reason you were born. I will remember you. They're just generally trying to let us know that Colorado is a haunted place. Shane is also purveying throughout the series, and I think for even longer, that he's in some way a type of special person who a ghost or a demon is attached to, or like supernatural crazy experiences follow him. It's basically the ghost version of when Tana Mojo used to tell these ridiculous stories that you knew weren't true, and she'd be like, I don't know what my life is, the craziest thing just happened to me, and that's why a guy with a knife came out of the woods and slit my throat, but I sewed it back together with dental floss. Like, okay, or you just need attention. So Shane gives a lot of credit to like these online demon hunters or demonologists or mediums. Again, I'm not discrediting their titles, but he gives screen time to those of them who make videos letting Shane know that he is valid and correct in his assumption that there is something haunting him. For a while, I actually did believe you were lying, but now after everything that I've seen, you are being haunted by a legitimate spirit. This is an earthbound spirit. He is full black and I believe he's from the 1800s. He has a hat. Very specific type of person and indeed. It certainly sounds specific from your description. What I have from you so far about Shane's ghost is that he's a man from the 1800s with a cowboy hat. But I think I also speak for a large segment of the audience when I ask for just a little more clarity because I don't want to live in a world where a psychic medium just casually tosses Shane Dawson the information that his 
spirit is full black. Cause you know he'll be like, see that explains why I've been appropriating black culture for all these years. It was my 17th century black cowboy spirit taking over. From the rest of the last frontier mediums video, it seems like this phrase is not referring to anything racial, but rather the ghosts intentions to cause harm. But why would Shane, who's been accused of racism, even leave that in open to interpretation in his video when he could have just cut it out? Do you know how many obvious blackface jokes he would have just walked into on YouTube if his most devoted fans weren't actively back to bullying people who speak out against Shane Dawson? I got a tweet about my last video being like, you're as white as a ghost. You don't need to be fighting people, people of color's fight. And I'm like, okay, that sounds like the comment made by either a very immature child or or a very immature adult, but either way, obviously people of color don't need me as an individual to fight for them because for example, black people have been fighting for centuries before I was born to get even a fraction of the amount of privilege that I was just born with. And they've been fighting with their lives. So I'm allowed to have lived with white privilege and still be sad that Shane used his to dress up in blackface in the 2010s and still go on to earn lasting fame and fortune. While actual black people in this country need to worry about their lives and their safety in ways that I will never fully understand. And Shane certainly won't either, no matter how much bronzer he applies, because I don't need to be black to know that black lives matter. And also it's up to tell a queer person that they cannot stand as allies in this movement as we are all part of the same pride flag because we realize that like every group of people, we have way more in common than not. I know I'm preaching to the choir here because all of those people who tweet me negative things admit to having not watched the actual video. Feel like it serves as a reminder to white people that yes, we have white privilege, but there are ways that we can use it to help implode white supremacy from within if we work really hard at, at being allies and learning to be anti-racist. Speaking of, we finally start talking a little bit about the location of the ghost hunting adventure tonight, where basically Morgan brings them into the basement and starts talking about Third Bridge in Colorado, which is the haunted bridge they'll be visiting, as well as the Sand Creek Massacre. Again, we get this information partially from what Morgan says, but definitely have gaps filled in thanks to a haunting in Colorado's channel. What is up, fam? Welcome to another haunted adventure. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a haunting in Colorado. So tonight's adventure is one of the most famous thought to be paranormal spots in Colorado. Uh, it's a really haunted place here in Colorado. Uh, these stories almost give you chills. Mama, at this point, the stories are almost putting me into full-blown shock. My plans for the rest of the night after this are to have a trusted neighbor wrap me in a foil blanket and keep an eye out to make sure I don't wander into the desert. By the way, what we just witnessed was Shane's trademark brand of editing fluff that I like to call video bullshit where the introductions to several reference videos are strung together to take up time, and if you're not watching carefully, to create a renewed feeling of excitement here at the midway point of the video. So you forget that nothing has happened so far or is going to happen for the rest of it. Like in what world do I need all of those YouTubers being like, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I'm not watching their channel. I'm watching your channel, Shane. Why don't you make a goddamn video with me? Anyway, hold on. I've never felt more comfortable knowing that Shane Dawson doesn't live in California anymore. My apologies to Coloradans, not only for how red your state is, but also because you have to see Shane at Bed Bath & Beyond sometimes. Like, not me, could never be me. Here's a title card that gives Shane carte blanche to talk about any issue. Again, it feels like there just needs to be some sort of mention that we, you know, are paying respect to rest in peace. And that's like a blanket permit to run around playing freeze tag scared in the dark over people's gravestones. For example, how is this title card gonna say, our ghost adventure has nothing to do with this Native American massacre? And then they cut basically right to this. You can hear like the native drums. Oh, I can hear it when I stick my head out. Okay, yeah. Chris, roll your window down and stick your head out the window. You can hear drums? You stick your head out the window, yeah. <laughs> Like Shane really just said, our haunted spooky story has nothing to do with the indigenous people. Oh my God, I hear the spooky 
squeaky native drums in the distance. We've awakened a haunted curse. Like, do millions of people really not see him doing the exact opposite of what he said? He's like, there's many other reasons people talk about this bridge being haunted. We'll bring up zero of them and then talk about drums and Native Americans some more. Like, if you really wanted to make it not about the Native American massacre, you could have just not taught me about that. And I wouldn't have had to know that you're basically being disrespectful to the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribes. Which, by the way, is a feature of this haunted adventure that Shane had no idea about until just now. It's really sad when you think about the fact that this Sand Creek massacre, all these innocent people were murdered for literally no reason other than some white dude wanted to show that he was like, big old man. Like, is this disrespectful or bad karma? Because I'm just a big old white man that wants to show the creepy spookies. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's not great, you know, it's not a great idea. But at this point, it really feels like as a group, you've all put in a few too many hours recording this video to stop and think of something else. Although that pre-production work obviously didn't involve Shane stopping to scan the Wikipedia page of the haunted location he's subjecting. Like you really decided on a haunted location and then it was your fiance's little sister who had to first tip you off that you would be ghost hunting on the site of a mass murder of indigenous people due to white colonialism. I don't know how Shane expected to do any sort of ghost hunting videos without expecting to piss off at least a small number of people who find it disrespectful to run around at night pretending like you hear the spirits of people who did actually once exist. You're not out here with Scooby-Doo and the gang trying to identify the hook-handed specter of Makeout Point. This is America. Every state has land that people killed American Indians or Native Americans over. But to Shane's point, he's right, we shouldn't be talking about the Sand Creek Massacre. And really, this adventure isn't about any of that stuff anyway, as Morgan here helps us quickly justify. Now that I know, we go there in like the respect of the Hungates. Okay, yeah. And so the Hungate was the one that the fam he came back and his family were scouts. Oh yeah, that sounds like much better representation for the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribe members who died in that massacre. You see, we're not ghost hunting to make light of that brutal killing. We're simply paying our respects to the innocent white Hungate family, whose murders were swiftly blamed on just all Native Americans in general and directly led to the Sand Creek Massacre. Shane really said, I repeat, we are not disrespecting any indigenous people or victims of racial crime. We are simply putting on a pedestal, celebrating, and throwing a small pizza party for the minority number of white victims whose deaths were used to unfairly justify the racial killing. Big difference. Actually, it's a subtle difference. So subtle, some might say it's even negligible. Again, it's like, just reveals that Shane did absolutely no research ahead of starting this video, that he had no idea what this series was even gonna be. If you recall, it started as mostly a house tour. I just don't like it. Like he's getting so many views still, like not the tens of millions, but still the twos and threes of millions of views for videos that he obviously doesn't care about. This three part series was one day of shooting and then who knows, three, four days of editing, Maybe maybe longer, but I know he's not working full eight hour days. Like I'm staying up till like all hours of the night making these videos and, and so do many other creators, but I'm just not seeing that same passion or work ethic from Shane anymore, let alone originality or respect for other people. That's when I was starting to feel safe out here. I start to hear all these tragic stories and I'm like, maybe people are crazier here. I mean, I don't know, Ryland, I think you'd be pretty safe back during that massacre. I don't know if you fully understand which side of the white murderer, a Native American war you'd be on. And again, this is an entire country built on a foundation of colonialism, enslavement, white supremacy, and a sexually violent relationship against women in a patriarchy that also reacts violently towards men with perceived femininity. I'm speaking from experience here because to Republicans, both Ryland and I sound exactly like Jack McFarland from Will and Grace, and that's all we'll ever be to men of them. So he thought he would feel somehow safer in a mostly red state, in a voting district that borders right on a big sea of Trump-loving Republicans. Like, this whole square looks like 30% of the Trump TV subscriber base. Sis. 
I've had to come to accept that there is no place in America or likely on earth where every person of color or queer person will feel completely safe at all times. Not at this current stage of society. Because when it comes to queer people and people of color, unfortunately, the societal systems in our country and most others were not built for those communities to succeed. So I'm not just gonna move to the middle of the country because I can get a, a bigger house for the same amount of money. My goal as a queer American is to just find a place to live where I feel the least like I'm gonna get hit if I wear a liquid lipstick to the grocery store. Sorry, sorry to me for having no no choice but to live in big cities, you know, like, and, and I'm sorry for people of color who truly have no safe place in their communities uh, as long as there are police killings that are just completely unchecked and racial violence from white homegrown terrorists. Like, there's a lot to be done. My patience wears thin watching Shane Dawson get like all of these sh culture shocks about tribal killings and murders happening all over the place as though he's a child learning about this stuff for the the first time like oh here's some footage we've never seen before where Shane is also guaranteeing us that this 18 hour experience of watching this goddamn series won't be for nothing honestly do you think we're gonna see anything oh yeah yeah. I would have forgotten. Oh, 100%. <laughs> Why 100%? Because that I things follow me. For sure. Like, I guess you don't know that. Things follow me, Chris. You're not going to go out again. The way you said that was so scary. <laughs> no, it actually wasn't, Chris. It's never been scary. And in fact, it's become less scary over time. To the point where if this footage is used in the final installment, it will actually hit the point of being hilarious. Because just like Shane, I also think it's weird and scary that anyone would follow him. Don't things follow me? <laughs> Like what? Everything? Like ghosts, demons, me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shane wants to be Katie from Paranormal Activity so bad, but I think that character kind of worked because she had a partner who acted affectionate or even remotely interested in her. So it would be a tough shoot for Shane and Ryland here. Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, okay? Everybody expresses their love differently. I don't know anything about their lives. I believe war is evil, children are the future, and all. Listen, I'm not sitting here coming for anyone else's love language, since apparently mine is sometimes straight up dishonesty. What can I say? I'm a work in progress. Oh, that was supposed to be Harley Quinn, but I think I gave you Bostonian Newsboy from the 1900s. This ain't a library, mister. It's one nickel if you want to turn the page. <gasps> Ooh, that's a great character that I can use for auditions. What? According to that Ben Hansen movie, 30 year olds can play children now. That's why I'm sharpening up my acting skills. If teenage Jacob Tremblay thinks he's getting the role of gender non-binary Junie in the new Spy Kids reboot, he better check his and luck because I'm coming up right behind him. That's not a real movie or character or casting that's about to happen, but it's believable, right? You be you would believe that. I say let's do it. Call Robert Rodriguez, but tell him I'm gender non-binary Junie. Also, just to save everyone the comments, I did know that the real Junie is dating Megan Trainer. Actually, I hate when I say like, I'll save you the com- I, It's good for me when you comment it anyway, and then go see my first video uploaded to this channel where I made fun of Megan Trainer for a embarrassing interview she gave in Seventeen Magazine. Shane's family is trying to convince this like 70 year old grandma to go with them ghost hunting. And she's like, no, 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 I'm really done being involved. And then we go right to a teaser for the next episode. So like, it's official. Friends, nothing has happened. Do people live out here? No, this is like out there. Is that my name? Um, what the f? Oh, it is oh my god! What is We're gonna see something. Like, some shit's gonna happen. Shane, come on. Please don't say that. What, 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 is it too late to back out? Okay. Shane, what? Do you really think something bad's gonna happen? Well, I don't wanna freak everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> Are you referring to my wish for something interesting to happen or my wish for this entire series to be over? <gasps> you couldn't possibly mean, did you? Did you get me the new Barbie Dream Camper playset? That's a secret wish that I only told Santa in my letter. I also love when Shane implies that his name is like somehow written in their graffiti when it fully says sham. And I'm like, hey, money earned being a sham still pays the mortgage and property tax on that multi-million dollar home it would appear, so way to own it. Of course, we can't, uh, uh, just get out of here without like a painful interaction with the dad one more time. I remove myself from Ryland's 
family. Divorce. Because you mo you're moving back to your hometown, it's like going backwards. It's what all the country singers write about. <laughs> I can't wait for the new country music songs to come out. My electric car attacked my ass. <laughs> Everyone just stop reacting. Bruce is clearly the type of dad who even interprets nervous laughter as a sign of encouragement. He's like that T-Rex from Jurassic Park. If no one makes a move, he won't try his hand at musical improv for the first time in front of a recording camera. At this point, I've never been more ready to get out of the inside of someone's house and spend the night in a historically significant field. I'll post Mates frozen yogurt for everyone right to that memorial stone marker if we can leave right now and promise that Bruce doesn't come. Oh, but that's uh, episode two for ya. And again, I'm really, I think at this point, most shocked and unnerved by the lack of proper accreditation and the amount of story heavy responsibility that Shane gives to just like creators whose work he seems to be tearing down without permission. If any of you watching are creators featured in Shane's video or know any of the creators featured in this video, I would love to know, did Shane reach out to you before using your clips? Cause it doesn't seem like it from the comments. It seems like people alerted these creators that they had been included and like a couple hundred people were like, oh, I had to come check it out. But again, it's not like Shane is providing exponential growth to these people. So in my opinion, he He's really getting more out of the deal than he's giving. But you feel free to let me know your opinion. I know Shane Dawson stands already are, even though they didn't watch this. But for the rest of you, thank you so much for joining me for episode two of Shane's Haunted Theories. I can't wait for episode three of Shane's Haunted Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up if you love these Shane Dawson breakdowns. And most importantly, if you're new to my channel, I would, or if you've been watching and you're just unsubscribed, that's not super cool. I'm just kidding. But maybe you wanna click that subscribe button so you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. That way you'll always get notifications when I've got a fresh new video for ya. Also, I've got merch available and a Patreon where you can access exclusive episodes and bonus watch parties. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for joining me for another haunted theory. I will see you next time.